Hello, my name is McKinley Grimes with Future Plus Systems, and this presentation is going to be going over DDR5 in-system test. The purpose of this presentation is to go over DDR5 validation challenges over DDR4. Answer the question, can DDR5 be monitored in systems like DDR4? Test equipment and DFE, examples of DDR5 probing for protocol and security integrity analysis, and to discuss the DDR5 sideband bus. There are many DDR5 validation challenges over DDR4. One of these challenges is the two 32-bit buses or subchannels versus a single 64-bit bus. From a logic analyzer perspective, this means that it, we need two clock domains or machines. So if we want to see traffic on both buses, we have to have one subchannel trigger the other subchannel. Each of these subchannels is on its own a set of logic analyzer cards. A difference in DDR4 and DDR5 is that in DDR4 we could see the entire bus with three LA cards, but for DDR5 it will take four. This would include the address, command, control, and the data. Unlike DDR4, for DDR5 we have different pinouts for the UDIM and the R slash LR DIM. This means that we cannot share interposers between an RDIM system and a UDIM system. That makes debug more expensive. Since the speeds are faster than DDR4 for SODIM, the interposers are more difficult to route and require smaller features, which will add more costs. Some more challenges for DDR5 validation over DDR4 are double data rate CA bits, higher speeds and lower voltages, and no eye at the traditional pro point, which on DDR4 was the DIM slash SODIM slot. On this slide, you see a DDR5 logic analyzer eye scan for a DDR5 RDIM system at 4,000 megatransfer per second, and also a DDR4 at 3,200 megatransfers per second. You will notice that the eyes on the DDR5 system are almost closed. Since the logic analyzer does not have DFE, a closed eye will result in unreliable acquisition by the logic analyzer. Yet another complication for DDR5 is the two cycle commands. In DDR4, we could get the entire command and column address along with the control signals on a single rising clock edge. Not the case for DDR5. DDR5 has less signals for the command, address, and control Thus, they are multiplexed and delivered on multiple clock edges. DDR4 had over 30 signals for address, command, and control, and a DDR5 subchannel has only 11. Here is a chart from the JetX spec that's giving more details on each of the commands. You will see that each command that's in the red box are two cycle commands, while all the remaining commands are one cycle. The first five CA bits and the chip select bit are used to distinguish each of the commands from each other. Because of all these complexities with DDR5 commands compared to DDR4 commands, a protocol analyzer approach is going to be much more reliable than trying to use a scope. The largest single challenge for DDR5 is the closed eye at the probing point. The current crop of logic analyzers and protocol analyzers has no DFE. Because of this problem, TMN vendors have been hard at work trying to provide solutions. Future Plus and Keysight have also been working on DDR5 over the last four years. Based on simulations, we anticipated needed DFE when the bus reached 4,000 megatransfers per second. Based on our experience, we were correct. DFE is needed at 4,800 megatransfers per second and between 4,000 and 4,800 megatransfers per second, the bit error rate increases, leading to some captures being unreliable. Here we see eyes from a logic analyzer with a DDR5 UDIM at speeds of 2933. This is an example of a burst 16 for read and write eyes, and these are the DQ data signals. You can see that this is a very well behaved system as the eyes look uniform with a good single threshold that goes through all the eyes of the burst. Now here's the same system at 4,000 megatransfers per second. 
Now you can see that the eyes are closed, certainly on the read, and thus the bit error rate would be high when latching this data. The right eyes could probably still be received with relatively high confidence. So can we use the traditional passive slot interposers for DDR5? At below 4,000, yes. And this will be for both the DQ and CA bits. For the RDIM and LRDIM, both the CA and DQ bits are DDR. For UDIM and SODIM, slot interposers can be used with traditional logic analyzers where the DQ bus is 4,000 megatransfers per second and the CA is 2,000 megatransfers per second or just CA only up to 4 gigahertz on the CA bus. When the DDR clock is faster than 2.5 gigahertz, the interposers provide a clock divider to handle the clock limitation of the logic analyzer. Because of the problems above a speed of 4000 on the CA and DQ buses, we have had to add active logic to the traditional slot interposers. A standard DDR5 RCD invalidation pass-through mode provides both the DFE and the deceleration of the CA bus. So from a system perspective, it looks like two RCD loads in a single slot. The system trains with this extra load in the circuit. The interposer is not routed exactly as shown, but it sits in the slot with the DUT in the exterior card connector. The Q side of the RCD goes to the logic analyzer. This is not without its challenges. DDR5 memory controllers and systems will have to be a little smarter to accommodate bus monitoring tools. The system will have to train with the extra RCD load in the slot and will have to train the RCD on the interposer by looping back each signal on the alert pin to see if its eye overlaps with the clock. The system can use the LBD for the DUT training. Once the correct VREF and DFE settings are discovered, they can be programmed into the interposer's RCD. Here's a quick rundown on the training process. As can be seen by the diagram, the DUT feeds back its signals to the memory controller on the LBD signal. The RCD on the interposer uses the alert signal. The memory controller goes through one by one each signal pair, one from the DUT and the corresponding one from the interposer. It makes sure that there is enough overlap in the eye such that the memory controller's single clock can be used by both the DUT and the RCD on the interposer to latch the signal being trained. As speeds go faster, Delays from the memory controller may be necessary to provide the eyes overlap. Here are some pictures of passive interposers for UDIM, LRDIM, and SODIM, and an active slot interposer for RDIM and LRDIM. Due to the higher speeds, probing memory down for DDR5 can also be another challenge. Shown here are two different kinds of memory down probing for DDR5. The one on the right is for scope probing, and the one on the left is for the logic analyzer. Now, let's transition to talking about the DDR5 sideband bus. The new sideband bus is much more important than what we had on DDR4. It is also much more complicated than what was used on DDR4. There are hundreds of different registers and thousands of different settings. The new sideband bus has many devices on a single RDIM that it will need to communicate with. Shown here is the name of the part and the specification that covers it. We have an SPD slash hub, the RCD, multiple power management devices, and temperature sensors. This new sideband bus uses the physical layer of MIPI I3C. Here on this slide is pictures of how we are probing the sideband bus in our lab. We use a small flex connector to go directly to the pins of the hub slash SPD chip. To get analysis of the DDR5 sideband bus, 
we use our own product called the FS2720 Sideband Bus Analyzer. And shown here is a state listing of the sideband bus in action. This listing was generated from a UDIM and it shows the memory controller reading the hub chip to read the SPD for the UDIM configuration and then receiving that configuration information. The benefit of this tool is meant to help take out some of the complexity of this new bus. Otherwise, you'll need to have eight different specifications that you'll need to refer to to see all device registers and their meanings. Here in the same listing, we see the PMIC being programmed with the frequency and voltage settings. We can also use the logic analyzer to help us debug power issues. Here are some screenshots from our lab showing how we check to validate the power. We can look at the state listing to see if the PMIC was programmed, and then we can look at the voltage and to see if it comes up on the UDIM after the PMIC was programmed correctly. Something new for DDR5 is the hub device. And this hub device contains the SPD, the hub, and a temperature sensor. It acts as a bridge from the host, SCL, and SDA signals to the devices that sit behind the hub devices like the RCD, the PMIC, and additional temperature sensors. The sideband bus starts in I2C, and then after seeing a CCC called SET AASA, will phase over to I3C. As shown on the previous slide, it is easiest to probe the host side of the bus. DDR5 is much more challenging than DDR4 when it comes to validation and testing. The tools ecosystem is now ready as we have been working on DDR5 for several years. The current 4800 and 5600 megatransfers per second solutions will soon be migrating to 64 megatransfers per second and beyond. Stay in touch as new tools are announced frequently. And thanks for listening.